No more playing with the holo porter and no more excuses. Get to work. But it's boring, Mom. Yeah. You'll do your ancient history homework or you'll kiss this weekend's trip to the Horsehead Nebula goodbye. But, Mom. No buts and no translation module. Hey, let's see if the transporter can fix the dog. I said now. OK, OK. We're starting. Twenty-eight light-years away from our home in the Mobiplex is the tiny Shrew-class galaxy AP052. The ancients referred to it as the Milky Way, and it was home to several life-sustaining planets, the most unusual of which was Earth. Millions of species of life forms inhabited the water-based planet during its 7.2 billion years of existence. However, just one of these species, known collectively as human, came to dominate the landscape, destroy the planet, and disseminate its genetic material across the universe. Recent evidence, however, suggests that this species died out with the rest of the planet. Indeed, its extinction may have preceded that of many life forms. This lesson module examines that theory and the species. It is well known throughout the universe that the human species was engineered utilizing unstable genetic material called DNA, which rapidly evolved. In 5273, 612 solar years after the recorded extinction of all human existence, a Plutonian ethno-explorer made a startling discovery while rummaging about Earth's remains. In the valley of an ancient forest, the Plutonian came across a mound of lava-hardened Earth riddled with holes. He injected tech polymer into the cavities. From the earthen mold came the first and only known complete cast of the last known species of human. Even more spectacular was the evidence of dwelling and diet. The new species was named Homo twinkus, also known as Muffin Man. The first humanoid species evolved five billion years after the formation of planet Earth. Yes, I know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Yes, I know the Muffin Man. Humans were much like the species with which they shared 98% of their genome. Have you seen them? Look in the mirror. Eight. You just might be them. You say you want to lose weight, but it just don't work. The pills taste too good. Health clubs offer a ditch. You tried They evolved, however, over the next four million years to become a distinctly different animal. They were intelligent and created impressive civilizations, planet-spanning roadways, and complex sanitation systems. They also flourished creatively. Cave art and sculptures suggest a rudimentary appreciation of the arts and a sense of whimsy. However, humans were ultimately victims of their own weaknesses. During the last thousand years of hominid existence, a catastrophic collision of lifestyle and genetics resulted in a drastic evolutionary change. Obesity was the visual landmark of this mutation. Thus, Muffin Man was born and died. Fossil dating reveals the evolutionary divergence began in 1945. By the third decade of the second millennium, over 98% of the Earth's remaining humanoid population was obese. Outwardly, Muffin Man was similar to previous Modern Man, just shorter and fatter. But internally, Muffin Man had specialized to perform two functions, consume food and process visual entertainment. Another day. It was just a Saturday. The sun was out, 
and life was okay. Muffin Man had a brief but enjoyable existence during the decline of humanoid civilization. In the Muffin Man era, buildings fell into disrepair, industrial research halted, and most ominously, with fewer able-bodied people to tend crops and livestock, farming was crippled. medical equipment production, food processing, and rubber chicken juggling were a few of the handful of industries that the Muffin Man attempted to sustain during their brief existence. Damn. Sorry, cat. Slipped out. There you go, cat. I got a kitty Happy Meal for you. Catnip? Yeah. Half dead parakeet. Honey pie, I'm home. Great. But I think you need to have a talk with the beaver. Too bad she didn't come into work today. Patty, miss work. What's wrong with the old bearded taco? I think she's probably home recovering from fume exposure. What? Hey, I got you a very happy meal. Yeah? Yeah. Cheeseburger, mezcal, and a pot brownie. Excellent. Did you supersize it? Couldn't. I was walking too heavy. Ah, that's okay. With this fudge doobie, I won't have to just watch old reruns. I can personally get lost in taste. <laughs> uh, so, problems at the Blessed Bakery? What happened to old Patty Cake? Uh, I think her crumpet's getting moldy. She going nuts? After putting a rack of muffins in the oven, I went to the bathroom. When I came back, she asked me where I'd been. Yeah? I told her I was in the back, pinching off a loaf. Oh, no. She didn't go after you, did she? <laughs> yep. Less than 30 seconds after detonation. Oh, lunch? Mm, triple bean chili grande burrito. <laughs> oh, real ring stinger. Anyway, she fell and couldn't get back up. Had to call the pseudomedics. Be free, my sweaty love apples. The couch awaits your dew ripened caress. She'll be out a while. Hey, uh, speaking of emergencies, Cat got into the medicine bin and managed to get into razor blades. Made a big mess. What the hell? Great, Cat Zooks. Get a gun. And something the nosh. I don't see anything, Pi. Any demolition around here today? Nope, that's all done. It's been as quiet as a toothless witch gumming jello. Weird. I've heard the ginger down the block has been missing since last Thursday. What happened? Don't know, but last month Cherry was found clubbed to death and deboned outside of the Mini Mart on 14th. And don't forget Sloppy Joe, killed and hung in a storage shed like a dry cured ham. A lot of crime around here lately. The human species' ape-like brain predisposed them to violence and crime. Preston. Yeah. Right, I said a gun. Hi, yeah, no, Preston says you have the gun. Hello. I had it. That was months ago. I last saw it under. Oh, my left thigh. Shit, it's lost. Pot, you need anything? Preston seems to be acting up again. No, I'm set. I had to bring me everything this morning right after I ran a diagnostic. <laughs> that metal masturbator's hardly worth a damn. Anymore. At the turn of the second millennium, there were over 20 million incarcerated individuals worldwide. By the year 2020, a whopping 35% of the human population was in prison, with another 22% on parole. This cultural phenomenon necessitated certain architectural changes, 
as well as legislation mandating on-site prison ATMs, latte carts, and daycare. It has been postulated that humans killed for enjoyment, but there is no evidence indicating exactly what was the thrill in killing the slow, elephantine species. Cannibalism has also been theorized. The argument for cannibalism is supported by an analysis of Homo twinkus physiology. Enzymes in the muffin man's stomach were well suited to digest and extract nutrients from, well, just about anything. Muffin Man can be described by three words, insatiable, intelligent, illogical. Many well-preserved Homo sapien dental specimens suggest a balanced diet free of the sugars which eroded the muffin man's teeth. Analysis of bone fragments in Homo sapiens reveal relatively high levels of carbon and nitrogen, confirming that meat was a major part of their diet. Similar analysis of a delicate Homo twinkus wrist bone reveals a diet composed primarily of fat. Fossilized feces, also known as caprolites, confirm these findings. The caprolites of Homo sapiens consist primarily of the remnants of meat. Fossilized feces of the muffin man have not been found. But given the lack of fiber in their diet and its fat content, they are theorized to have been nothing more than slippery lipid deposits. Wildcat, Jack Spratt, Mosh Moshi. Jack, you're home. Candy. Candy. We just made our weekly trip to the farmer's market for fruits and veggies. Want us to drop off your share? Candy is okay. so bad for me. Is she coming over here? Sure. Where you at, Candy? We're about five minutes out, just turning on to Drury Lane at 8th. Five minutes? Who's with you? Me, Biscuit, Pumpkin, and T-Bone. Pumpkin? And biscuit and tea yeah, bone. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, no time. I'll see you in five. Okay, so we get the special No, I'd appreciate it, Pi, if you didn't interrupt me when I'm on the phone. It's like you live vicariously through me or something. Sorry, dude. It's not like I have much choice. Evidence suggests that human pre-mating rituals were extensive and involved numerous hygiene practices. Piecing together a picture of the Muffin Man life and environment has been difficult. Given the size constraints of Homo sapiens sanitation fixtures, many aspects of Muffin Man's self-care are still elusive and can only be implied.
Jack. Hey. Preston. The farmer's market was stocked to the brim today. Here you go, look at all these vegetables. Red pepper corn chips, cucumber face mask, and the coup d'etat ketchup, fresh from the vine. Mm, vine ripened and plastic sealed. But who makes delicacies like this nowadays? Beats me. I got it from a guy who got it from a guy. You know, underground green market deal all the way. Candy, my beautiful candy, with a beautiful bouncing bosom and a bottom like two oiled mama hogs fighting over a mountain milk bottle. Pie, there's a lady in the house. It's just candy. Kisses to you, Pie. And back to you, my svelte sexy babe. A pumpkin. Is that a new outfit? I told you he'd notice. Yes, it is. Thank you. Oh, sexy. Tomorrow it's all about a thong, baby. Perhaps the biggest advance in humanoid fashion was also its biggest mistake, and a contributing factor to the eventual dominance of Muffin Man. Elastic. Some cite hook and loop closures as fashion's last stand. Though dominant in pre-mating rituals of Homo sapiens, fashion was a waning concern among Muffin Man. Due to production cutbacks and the Muffin Man's sheer stature, clothing options were limited. The catchphrase, one size fits all, guided most clothing decisions. However, fashion didn't stagnate entirely. And even the Homo Twinkus had their standards. Most female adults carried an extensive array of health and beauty accessories. Of note is exercise footwear which, paradoxically, became more elaborate and technologically advanced during this time. Hey, you got anything to drink? I got half shaved on banana liqueur last night, and my mouth tastes like the inside of a monkey's ass. Is soda okay? Great. What about you, pumpkin? No thanks. I just finished a bacon smoothie. Press and soda. What about Biscuit? Haven't you heard? No. He's stuck. The truck? Yeah, my fucking truck. The first documented case of a hominid becoming trapped due to obesity dated back to the first millennium. In the Muffin Man era, getting stuck in this manner, or sardined, was a common phenomenon. Yep, stuck, just like your roommate Pie. When did that fat fuck biscuit hit threshold? About two weeks ago, Mr. Kettle. We haven't been able to budge him since. It seems another person gets stuck every week or so. But Pi's been that way for almost two years now. 682 lonely, sweaty, porn and cream filled days. Yeah, Biscuit could probably diet, you know, get unstuck. But he doesn't want to, he just wants to keep eating. What about a larger truck? Or somebody else's. That's the biggest they make. Besides, I think he's happy. A man in his truck, a beautiful thing. Well, I guess there's some freedom in not being able to move. Hey, anyone up for some fun and games? Sports, or non-lethal competitions, were dominant in the pre-mating rituals of male homo sapiens. Among them, sports helped to establish dominance and form bonds of affiliation and mm, kinship. However, as attention spans decreased and populations of Homo Twinkus increased, the popularity of such competitions declined. Eventually, the only sport on Earth was one at which the Muffin Man was a master. Traces of sports historical influence remained in the Homo Twinkus culture. <sighs> we really should be going. I've got Aw, oh, come, on. come on, Candy, let's stay a while. Hey, mind if I smoke? T-bone. They're barbecue flavored and mmm. 
Menthol. You know those death sticks are gonna kill you. I've already died twice and been resuscitated. What's once more? 400 volts and a butt ugly burn on your chest while you drool your way through recovery? Ah, you're all a bunch of goddamn health freaks. I'm smoking. Someone close my door. Look, it's off. I promise. See? Fine, go ahead. A common genetic trait among both Homo sapiens and Homo twinkus was the propensity towards addiction. Alcohol, cigarettes, crack. Indeed, most hominids had convinced themselves that these weaknesses were glamorous. Alcohol, in particular, played a key role in the propagation of the primitive human species. It was often ascribed as having supernatural qualities and a magical ability to transform disagreeable and unappealing mates into desirable ones. <coughs> Ebone, you mind taking that outside? Jack may not mind, but my asthma sure does. Look, honey, we've got a few more deliveries to make and we're all running low on insulin and my knees are killing me. It must be these shoes. Anyway, if you want to stay here with Jack, well, I'm sure he'd love that, but we really should be moving along. Do you think it'll be okay? Will you be all right without me? We've only got two more deliveries to make and then I'm off to be hit on the head by that tavern bitch again. I won't have to move for a week. If it's okay with you and Jack. Bye, Jack. See ya. I'm gonna give you the Jack Spratt treatment. Let me be. Mammals, of which the hominids comprised a small percentage, were defined by the presence of hair, their reproductive process, and mammaries. Homo twinkus was no different, and the mammaries of the species had increased proportionally to match their body size. It is unknown if these behemoth bosoms were still functional in the female, but in the Homo twinkus culture, they were used extensively as a decorative element. The reproductive process practiced by most Earth species was both brutish and slimy. Evidence suggests that the female Homo twinkus had an erratic sex drive and estrus period, the management of which, along with baby poop control, led to global deforestation and the greenhouse effect. However, the male muffin man libido rivaled both the Homo sapien and the elusive greased weasel. The 63% reproductive rate achieved by the Homo sapiens could not be matched by the Muffin Man due to size inequities between their belly girth and sex organs. Thus, the population declined dramatically. When implantation was achieved, development proceeded in a manner similar to that of Homo sapiens. However, the immense growth rate of the Homo twinkus continued throughout life checked only by preteen dialysis and that all-important coming-of-age ritual, the first teenage heart attack. However, even the contrived mating rituals of the Muffin Man were not without their flamboyance. 
Preston. Preston. So we're on our crap series again, and uh, this is uh, what are we on? Series number forty-six on a hundred ways to cook the crab. And um, tonight we're going to have something special. We're going to uh, cook crab in a method that was used by the ancients. This is called boiling in water. And uh, so the trick here is that we add the butter later after it's cooked. I know that's a, a very odd concept, but um, and uh, we have the, the things. Historical texts describe Canine Familiaris, or the common dog, as Muffin Man's best friend. Coincidentally, both man and dog shared the genetic marker that resulted in their remarkable lack of restraint and intelligence regarding food intake. However, in general, dogs tended to eat better.
Kristen! Archaeologists initially believed that the existence of Homo sapiens and Homo twinkus overlapped by less than 50 years. The discovery of thin Homo sapien bones buried with those of Homo twinkus well into the second millennium crushed that concept. It is now known that these species coexisted for at least 51 years. This illustrates the fact that there are still many questions and mysteries surrounding the details of human existence. An enduring mystery involves the ancient discovery of a cave of Homo sapien skeletons on the submerged northwestern landmass. The thin, brittle bones all revealed signs of severe nutritional deprivation. The skeletons were buried with small sacks of silicon and seawater resting on the chests. Was this a religious belief? Or did the strange burial adornment recall the human's evolutionary connection to the sand and sea? Research into this area persists. So you can leave now. I was hoping I could stay. Pi said I could, if it was okay with you. But there's not enough space. There's barely enough food for me and Pi in this apartment. I don't need much room, and I don't need much food. Besides, Pi told me your servo bot's broken, and you can't afford another one. I could be your new servo bot. And more. Pi! What? Huh? How did this woman get in our house? Uh, I don't know. I woke up from a nap, and she was crouching in the corner of my room. Uh, maybe Pumpkin left the door unlocked when she left. Damn Pumpkin. Pi, what did you tell her? Not much. I was in a bad way when she got here. Preston's been acting pretty squirrely anyway. When she saw Preston wasn't working, she just started doing things. Helped me squeeze my lemon and even chained my bags. When she asked if she could stay, it was like she was reading my mind. Well, you're pretty skinny, but, but you don't look like you've been living out on the streets. Paradoxically, during the gluttonous reign of the Muffin Man, starvation killed almost 80% of the global Homo sapien population. In contrast, heart disease and vending machine accidents were among the leading causes of death in developed countries. Tell me what's really going on and maybe you can stay. If you lie, you're back out on the streets. I moved in with a guy, Spike a couple of years ago. It was good at first, but then he started hitting me. Body Nazi? Homo sapiens were also known as body Nazis. The term body Nazis was coined by the first North American stronghold of Homo twinkus. These muffin men were subject to humiliation by the Homo sapiens. The torture included surgery designed to control the size of the mammoth new species. This was the first Battle of the Bulge. Anyway, it started getting out of control. When I'd hide, he wouldn't let me eat, and I don't have any money, so I was starving. So I ran away. Hey, we'll give it a trial run. Thank but you. I expect you to be as good as a servo bot. And no stealing from the pantry. We're in a very tight budget and we must carefully control our food supply. Finally, 
I have to insist that you stay inside the house at all times unless we make other arrangements. If you've got some deranged boyfriend after you, I, I don't want him following you back to our home to turn us all into chopped liver. No argument from me. Distinguishing traits of Homo Twinkus included not just a size and mating incompatibility with Homo sapiens, but also a completely different brain chemistry. Intellectual decline among the Homo Twinkus is often attributed to the fact that the species became incapable of relating to a concept unless it could be restated in terms of food. Evidence suggests that Muffin Man viewed himself merely as a conglomeration of the foodstuffs available in his environment. Hamstrings, barrel chest, bread basket, turkey neck, egghead, Adam's apple, cherry cheeks, pie hole, cauliflower ears, ribs, meat hooks, salt cellar, bear claws, nuts, and buns. And this has to be our little secret. I can't have my friends finding out that I'm harboring a body Nazi's girlfriend in my house, but I can't even imagine what the penalty would be. And if you don't work out, we're going to get rid of you without even thinking about it. Deal? Deal. So, is the pretty lady staying? For now. Yay! This is the pantry. The mammoth Homo Twinkus lived in a relatively small world and had limited imagination regarding the extent of the universe. The landmass where most Homo Twinkus fossils and artifacts have been discovered is in the northern hemisphere of Earth. Tectonic movements suggest that the landmass was significantly larger at the dawn of humankind, but by the era of the Muffin Man, due to global warming and glacier meltdown, the majority of land had become submerged. The remaining land was something in size akin to a Venusian island. Homo Twinkus thrived in this shrinking world. Family hominid genus Homo, species Twinkus. This was the glorious endpoint of five million years of human evolution. Evolutionary lineages of the superfamily hominid are still fiercely debated among intergalactic scholars. However, the progression presented here is a generally accepted view. Australopithecus afarensis evolved into Australopithecus africanus and from there into Homo genus. There is some dispute as to which evolved first, Homo rudolfensis or Homo habilis. But Homo habilis resulted in Homo erectus, the Homo sapiens' most recent direct ancestor. Homo sapiens then through an evolutionary process mimicking punctuated equilibrium, quickly mutated, evolving sequentially in the span of less than 300 years into Homo doboius, Homo porcus, Homo marshmallowus, and finally, Homo twinkus, muffin man. Of interest is the once controversial Homo neanderthalensis. The Galactic Genetic Consortium eventually confirmed their human ancestry by discovering Neanderthal DNA intermingled with that of the Homo sapiens. High concentrations were found in areas of unusual stone monuments. The densest areas of Neanderthal DNA occurred in association with incarcerated populations and those in the entertainment industries.
What's the matter, Jack? Don't you want to come in my pudding? Hola, digame. Jack, you're home. It's your friendly neighborhood Meals on Wheels. Homo sapiens carefully extrapolated their knowledge of nutrition to develop a sensible food pyramid. However, Homo twinkus distorted the food pyramid to serve their own purposes. Ready for your veggies? What have you got? Oh, you won't believe it. We scored some candy corn this week. It's tender and succulent. You'll love it. Uh, sounds great. Good, we're about 10 minutes out. We just need to drop off ham bones, lemon furniture wax. Uh, we? Uh, who's with you? Can you go see if Pie needs anything? This is sort of a... Uh... Well, the usual, me, Biscuit, pumpkin, pumpkin? and T-bone. Uh, well, you see, my mom's coming over for a visit in about 10 minutes. Jack Scott, are you trying to avoid me? Uh, no, no, no. It's just, um... Then are you ashamed of me? No, no. It, it, it's just... You think your mother won't think that I'm good enough for you? No, no. I just... Uh... Jack Spratt, you are the most horrible, despicable monster I ever gave my virginity to. One of the distinctive traits of primates on Earth were their opposable thumbs and relatively large brains, which took decades to mature. There were distinctive and almost incompatible differences between the adult male and female brains. While the male tended to focus on meat, games, and jugs, females tended to be concerned with chocolate, footwear, and tracking down odd smells. It is interesting to note that the galactic treat of flavored gelatin can produce an electroencephalogram similar to that of Muffin Man's. Coincidence or destiny? Pumpkin, sweetie, uh, you're my honey muffin, baby. You know that. It's, it's just that I've been busy at work. You know how people get about pastries around the holidays. What holidays? Thanksgiving. And, of course, National Regurgitation Day. Oh, yeah. But why can't we stop over now? I've got a brand new Moomoo on with no bra. We could drop off your groceries and then you and I could play Find the Golden Donut with your cinnamon stick. The Muffin Man's intimate connection to sex through food led to its integration into supernatural beliefs. An archaeological dig in the year 3012 unearthed what appeared to be a major religious shrine. The artifact has been restored and is on display at the Ontariac Museum of Antiquities as a magnificent testimony of the Muffin Man's elaborate religions. Oh, honey, I'd love to, but, but my mother is coming over for a visit. Well, then I could meet her. No, no, no. no. I, I want my mother to meet you on a special occasion, on, on a special holiday with, with good food and our good friends. When you're wearing a bra. Okay, Jackie, but I want it to be soon. I promise, Honey Muffin. Uh, now, I gotta go. Mom's gonna be tired and hungry after a trip. Okay. You take care of your mama. I will. Uh, tell Candy that I'll call her about getting my produce. Will do. And Jack? Yes? I love you. Uh, back at you. Bye. I think everything's ready for your mother. I made three honey hams, two baked cheese loaves, three roasted chickens, and I placed dishes of finger food all across the apartment. 
Oh, and I stood up the hot sauce fountain and filled the chili milk. Oh, hope, you silly. She's coming for dinner and spending the night. I know. So, we should get another meal ready. It's a long trip she's making, almost 10 miles. The invention of the wheel propelled humans out of the Stone Age. However, innovations in transportation abruptly declined as the combustion engine became more and more a symbol of the size and excesses of civilization. Depletion of fossil fuels by Earth Year 2020 left the short-sighted Homo Twinkus in a lurch. The massive incarcerated population was temporarily utilized to generate more energy. However, these fuel alternatives did little to fill the void. She's a big eater when she travels. How about a brisket? Each adult Homo Twinkus needed to consume approximately 20 grams of fat and 2,000 kilocalories a day. However, their calorie consumption was almost quadruple what they required, 8,000 kilocalories a day. This sustained their lifelong weight gain. Okay, but Jack? Yes? Well, when will I meet her? Surely you'd tell your own mother about me. God, no, she's the last person I'd tell. Why? Oh, my mother grew up during the supreme reigns of the body Nazis after the gene wars. It was before the Great Ones created meat shakes or cheese-flavored lint. It, it was a time before bioengineered red licorice trees. It was awful. She's told me stories. At first, there were the diets. The people died. The body Nazis created abominations to nature like fat-free milk, soy riblets, sugarless candy, and carob tofu ice cream. They outlawed spandex, control top pantyhose, and any food with the word nugget in it. Yeah, it's true, and that was just the beginning. They put a fat tax, penny per calorie on any food that didn't meet the minimal nutritional guidelines. Finally, they resorted to putting her and not just my mom, but whole cities into concentration camps. The body Nazis monitored their cholesterol levels and forced them to eat three square meals a day. Some of those meals even had steamed or raw plants in them. Anyway, the Fast Food Liberation Front eventually overthrew the body Nazis and freed the prisoners, but none of the survivors left unscarred. My mother still has nightmares about turkey bacon and little gremlins called HDL and LDL that haunted her very existence. So, in deference to her sensitivities, I think it would be best if you just stayed in Pi's room while she's here. He sleeps most of the time anyway. Well, will I ever meet her? I don't know. A very old woman. Homo sapiens were remarkable in developing life-sustaining technology, and their average lifespan doubled during their existence to 76 years. By the start of the second Earth millennium, children as young as 10 began to develop obesity-related diseases, such as atherosclerosis and diabetes. Life expectancy in Homo twinkus decreased dramatically to an average of only 21 years by the time of their extinction. The top 10 causes of death among Muffin Man were 1. Heart attack 2. Choking or suffocation 3. Diabetes 4. Bathing mishaps 5. Stroke 6. Vending machine accidents 7. Homicide 8. Trouser fires 9. Plagues of locusts 10. Infected bed sores the silver lining here is that most age-related diseases like cancer virtually disappeared since few people lived past the age of 30. Part of me would like her to meet you, to face a part of her past and make amends with its future. But part of me just wants to let her spend the rest of her days in peace. You're very sweet, Jack, and a good son. Thank you.
your sticky bread paws off my leg, man. Oh no, oh, testosterone. Man. You better back up, fat boy, before you get hurt. Uh, I don't think Hope wants to go with you, so, so why don't you just leave? She's my bitch, that's why. Uh, Hope. Protect me, Jack. I don't think I can, Hope. I'm not going anywhere with that stupid creep. I have finally found somewhere where I don't have to be afraid. And I'll die finding me before I let him take me anywhere. I have a show way. Get up. <laughs> Two homo sapien males encountered a receptive female. Fighting generally ensued. This type of bravery among the muffin man could only be replicated when food was at stake. Very good, Daniel. Now let's try some math. This is illustrated by the homo sapiens early experiments to investigate behavioral aspects of obesity. The subject thinks the investigator is assessing brain waves during problem solving. Those chocolates aren't for you. They belong to the director and he's saving them for the end of study party. But there's some veggies and water on the table if you're hungry. They are really investigating the powers of positive and negative reinforcement in altering the fat man's eating habits. See, don't you? Daniel, please don't eat the chocolate. Come on, two more problems. Note the inability to extinguish the inappropriate behavior even in the face of increasing shocks. Hominids evolved from several earlier, more primitive species. Thus, it is assumed that their propensity towards violence was genetic. The Homo sapien culture encouraged war, and they incorporated it into their lives and entertainment. Weaned on a culture of violence, the Muffin Man continued this love of bloodshed and weaponry, thus permitting propagation of yet another counterproductive gene, leading to the humanoid species' ultimate demise. What the f you? Get out. Just get the hell out of here and leave my boy alone, you burnt body Nazi. Muffin Man had an exquisite sense of color discrimination. Like Homo sapiens, it was most acute when it came to race distinctions. The Homo sapien practice of fractioning people into categories of white and black was modified and improved upon by the Muffin Man to encompass more possibilities. 
Their scheme involved 32 flavors. The majority of chocolate fudge, peanut butter swirl, and butter brickle races perished during the Great Global Famine. This left mocha and banana chunk as the most prevalent races, but for inexplicable reasons, most period literature extols the exclusivity and superiority of plain vanilla. Out, body Nazi, out. This is an over muffin, man, I swear to God. I said out, or you'll be tomorrow night's meal. Mmm, beef. Mm -hmm. We're not finished, fatty. Out. Oh my God. Jack, what's wrong? I think it's my heart. Jack, it's your heart. It's beating out of control. I'm getting the defibrillator. Wait, no. Now I'm feeling feverish, all tingly. Maybe it's the flu. During the Muffin Man era, over 97% of the organisms on planet Earth consisted of one or fewer cells. These tiny creatures, also known as bacteria, viruses, and germs, were a major cause of death and displayed an intellect and predatory sense that was both elusive and evolutionarily sound. These microorganisms still retain their stronghold on the planet, along with just one other multicellular creature. But Jack, what about your heart? You're right, I think that's the problem. You know, I, I always thought if I fell in love, I'd break it. But now I'm in love with you. You're just figuring that out now? Salalo shouted for upwards of a million years. Hi. How are you? And all the time she spoke, she uttered words that no one hears. <laughs> now you drown her and you never told me that. You want my love and I'm supposed to give it back. I never told you what I told you was in fact. The Salalo's wanderings will always leave a track. <laughs> the distant beaches, a carcass by a thousand spawn. The floating graveyards should be monuments so we can turn the TV on. And now you drown her and you never told me that. You want my love and I'm supposed to give it back. I never told you what I told you was in fact Salalo's wanderings will always leave a track The ribboned highways Wrapped along the southern sand And all the cars that drive along it Here's Salalo's mute demands mm -mm. Now you drown her and you never told me that You want my love and I'm supposed to give it back I never told you what I told you was in fact Salalo's wanderings will always leave a track <laughs> I 
carry I'll bury in the deepest run And I will be on earth Next time that Salalo comes Yeah and Now you drown her and you never told me that You want my love and I'm supposed to give it back Never told you what I told you was in fact. Salalo's wanderings will always leave a trail. <laughs> Salalo, wait. For you. You drown her and you never told me that You want my love and I'm supposed to give it back hey. <laughs> I never told you what I told you was in fact Slalo's wandering will always leave a track oh. Oh. <laughs> Spike? Oh, come on now. Open this door. I want my woman back before you turn her into a baby Yorker. Get out of here, Spike. I don't love you anymore. Can you just leave us alone? Oh, oh baby. All right, now, now, we were meant to be together, all right? Now, I love you. Now, don't you hurry up and open this door and run back to me while you still can, girl. No, Spike. If you loved me and you needed me so much, you wouldn't hit me. Oh, baby, I can't stop. Okay, but look, I promise that I'll hit you less than I hit you before. You're crazy. Hey, hey. Now come on, open this door. I told you, nobody's gonna get hurt. She's with me now, Spike. Why don't you go back to flexing your beef jerky biceps and playing Raid the Bat Cave in prison? Ooh, uh, that's tough talk, fat boy. But can you back it up with a little action? <laughs> oh, what's the matter, man? What, you scared to open it up because old mommy ain't here to save you? <laughs> hey, hey, Hope, if this is the boy that you decided to get with, then uh. I feel sorry for you, girl. <laughs> i tell you what, Spike. I'll open up the door if you promise not to fight. I'll tell you what, Jelly Roll. I'll promise not to fight if you promise to compete for hope. Now, wait a minute. I am not some carnival prize. I'm a living, breathing human. How? You name it, Butterball. Any sport you pick, basketball, baseball, <laughs> soccer, wrestling, whoever wins gets hope. Any event? No chess, no checkers, no TV quizzes. It's gotta be a physical competition, mano a mano. It's just that I don't believe in competitive sports. Take it or leave it, man. That's all I'm offering. Otherwise, I'll get hope anyway, and neither of you will ever be able to relax again. No peace. No quiet, no little short walks in the park. And you can say goodbye right now to that disgusting lump of protoplasm you got in that room. Hey, now that's a threat and I don't And I'll take care of your mommy too. Jack, we'll find a way. Agreed. Agreed. We we'll meet a week from the day. We we'll meet, repeat, and hope surprise. Now, uh, Hope, baby, I can see how you can go astray for all these uh, delicious-looking treats around here. But, baby, come on. 
you know, uh, Big Daddy Spice gonna treat you me right here. Right. You better show up, fat boy. Otherwise, I'm gonna make your life a whole lot worse than if you lost. Oh, oh, and uh, floating ain't a sport, Muffin Man. Jack, I thought you said you were working out. I was. Pumping iron. Ten reps. Jack, that's not pumping iron. Not that. That. So what am I supposed to do? I've tried. It's just, uh, I'm no good at any sports. I'm no good at anything. Well, what sports have you tried? Have you even tried any sports? Well, we're not gonna figure it out sitting here on our duff, silly. Let's go. Come on, Jack. If we still don't have your sport, and tomorrow's the big day. And that's why we should just relax and enjoy our last few hours together. You're such a negative, Nellie. Come on, you've got to be good at something. Uh, leave me alone. Or sit on my face. Either one's fine with me. Get up! Leave me alone, Hope. I'm s I appreciate your intentions, and I love you, but I'm doomed. You're not doomed. Because if you're doomed, then I'm doomed, and I'm not giving up. I'm not going back to Spike, even if you lose. Yeah? And it'll make our lives a living hell. Or worse, just kill us. I'll run away then. I have a feeling he'll find you. I'm sorry, Hope. I really am sorry. The only thing I'm good for is the thing I was bred for. 
eating. Hmm, bread. No, you're good for more than just eating your weight in muffins every day. You're, you're generous and intelligent and loving. And doomed. I'm a giant, good-for-nothing, day-old muffin. A doorstop, a lug, a slug with an ugly mug. And you can tug. So here's a hug. <laughs> I've got it, Jack. Now what, heartburn? No, your sport. Let's go. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Supernatural influences in humanoid culture have been extremely difficult to decipher. Certain images occur so frequently that it is obvious they must have some religious significance. One prevalent religion involved a foodstuff called cheese. In this belief, Muffin Man and Woman were created in a place called the Garden of Edom by the omnipotent creator, Gouda. It is uncertain how the Holy Baby Swiss fits into this complex belief structure, but it is widely known that different people believed in different aspects of Gouda. These differences resulted in the devastating global jihad of 2007. All cheese worshippers were equally devastated. No, I gotta admit, I really didn't think you'd show. Oh, what's this? What's some cocaine? What you been doping up, fat boy? Better than cocaine. Many donuts. You want one? You're gonna need it. I don't eat plastic food. So what's the other poison? What, baseball? Javelin? Tug of war. Bring it on. Oh good, we're not too late. Damn, can I smoke? Pumpkin. It's okay, Jack. I pretty much figured things out once you stopped getting your veggies delivered. Pumpkin, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to... I'm not sorry. Some men like the marrow, others like the meat. Besides, I've got a good thing going with Biscuit. The man is an absolute animal. I'm happy for you, Pumpkin, but that's a little too much information. Anyway, we're here to cheer you on. We're your friends. I made this for you. Let's go, Muffin Man. I ain't got all day. Let's get this over with so I can uh, get busy with my lady. The sex drive of Homo sapiens was unparalleled in the known universe. Indeed, just as the Homo twinkus's inability to stop eating was its undoing, the unbridled procreation of Homo sapiens would have eventually destroyed the species and planet. Evidence suggests that 87% of the late era Homo sapien economy could be directly tied to sex and that sex in one way or another was the driving force behind much of its technological innovation. Evidence also suggests that sex was not just for procreation of the species, but also a form of entertainment. And of course, the intimate link between sex and foodstuffs was an obvious and prevalent theme in their culture.
rise up and be strong. types of things. I told you, I told you, I'm not going anywhere without my woman. Come on. I thought I told you to leave my boy alone. Mom, how did you? Never you mind, Jack. Did you have a deal? Yeah, we had a deal. If I won, I got to keep hope, and he'd leave us alone. Is that right? Yeah, so? Mm. So you're a man who goes back on his word. Well, I met plenty of you veggie burger bastards when I was growing up, and I found there's only one thing to do with them. Yeah, and what's that? Kill them dead. Is that what you want, Jack? All I want to be is left alone, with hope. That was the deal, wasn't it, Spike? That, that, that was the deal. And, and um, you, you won, Muff Jack. So, I, I guess, I guess I'll just be leaving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I swear. I'm a man of my word. I swear you'll never see me again. And if he does, you'll be seeing me. But don't worry. It'll be the last time. Now get out of here. I love you, Hope, even more than I love muffins. And I love you, Jack, even more than I love muffins.
What about chocolate? butter sauce on yours? Jack? Jack! It's too much life and stuff. I really want to be in love. The waiting, the hating. Why can't we go on playing like children in springtime? Why can't you be mine? Life is so So much to There are innumerable suspects in Jack's untimely death, and several are being held for questioning. Minnie Donut, like his father, Jelly Donut, Minnie is chock full of fat and empty calories. However, due to his small size and charm, he is also highly addictive. Minnie is the leading suspect. Potato Chip, seemingly innocent and created from the goodness of Earth's nutritious potato. This character becomes insanely evil if fried. Each chip has a gram of fat, and you can't eat just one. Poor Jack knew this. His stomach contents revealed that he'd eaten 420 chips. The remaining chips are being held on bail. Ice cream. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. This cool character took on a new identity when it became gourmet, but it's still loaded with a whopping 40 grams of fat per cup. There are healthier ways to get your calcium, but Jack couldn't find them. He screamed for ice cream. Fried chicken, another case of dunking something perfectly healthy into a vat of artery-clogging oil, a rare accomplice of donut. Fried chicken is often involved in capers with the notorious beer. Chocolate bar, highly addictive with aphrodisiac qualities and excessive fat content. Chocolate bar was seen in the vicinity. Ultimately, the Muffin Man proved to be poorly adapted to the increasingly harsh conditions on Earth. In addition, their large bodies were ill-suited to the size constraints of Homo sapien civilization. The 
muffin man body habitus did not permit the type of arduous labor required to produce the massive food demands of their species. Their inability to move quickly made them prey for other species. Finally, fundamental physics and geometry precluded their continued reproduction. However, in their heyday, the Homo Twinkus lifestyle was one of unparalleled wealth, gluttony, and sheer fun. Muffin Man, if only for the briefest moment, capitalized on much of the entertainment, food processing, and labor-saving devices developed by the Homo sapiens and molded them into tasty tidbits for the all-you-can-eat buffet that was their existence. Listen up, America, this song about a threat. It ain't anthrax, it ain't smallpox, and it ain't politically correct. Ain't talking chubby, ain't talking big bone, ain't talking corpulent, I'm talking fat. You can call your love handles anything you want to, baby, but they're still gonna cause a heart attack. Hi! Do you know the Muffin Man, Muffin Man, Muffin Man? Have you seen him? Look in the mirror. You just might be him. You say you want to lose weight, but it just don't work. The pills taste too good. Health clubs offer a You tried reduction, liposuction, but you still got to gut. Blah, blah. You want to lose weight? Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Your mouth. You say you're large, you're overweight, but you ain't just fat. You make a DC 10 look like a tic tac. You say your knees hurt, but how they supposed to feel? You're like a Mack truck, I'm roller blade wheel. Got a big belly, got a big butt. Get on the floor to the Muffin Man squat. Blame the media, the government, your pituitary. But the real problem is, you can't lay off the dairy. Indians and Africans are all getting thinner. The Chinese gonna invade us and eat us all for dinner. Cause we fat and salty, just like a pork loin. Gonna deep fry and eat us. Leave nothing but the point, point, point. <laughs> gotta feed the baby, gotta feed the belly. We're gonna start a war and watch it on the telly. Fighting with the Arabs to the winner go the spoils. But we don't have to worry with as fat as oil. You got a big belly, you got a big butt. Get off the couch to the muffin man's butt. You think your double chin is really, really hot? Get off the fridge to the muffin man's butt. We drive gas guns and cars for our big fat bodies while we bring it surgery and pretend we're TV hot. It's like a big public secret we hide under our hats. You can call someone a nigga, but you can't call them fat. I can't even imagine what my friends would say if I screwed up this line. You used to have muscles and work out, but have you lately? Now you're chubby chubby because you always clean your plate. Don't care about Africans starving every day as long as you have your truck and whoppers done your way. Got a big belly, got a big butt. Get on the floor, do the muffin man squat. We all know tobacco gives you lung cancer, halitosis. But what about french fries building up that sclerosis? In our precious children and our pets that goes our future. I know you hear me singing. Do you see what we could lose here? Achievement generations, hell, we could kill the species because you don't give a damn and can't stop eating all that good cheese. Got a big belly. 
wrong with the old bearded taco? Do you know where mankind's headed? Do you know where we're going? As we fight and kill each other, eat ourselves into comas? I'd rather see a supernova of the galaxy than hang around as we slide down the evolutionary trees.